Anyway, I'm going to be uh, giving a demo about my favorite uh, terrain uh, presentation software, Natural Scene Designer. A new version uh, came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's available for Mac and finally for PC. So this is uh, Natural Scene De Designer 7.0. The developer, uh, Brett Casebolt, I was a beta tester for him, and he's been just very accommodating about uh, uh, cartographic-related requests. And I'm just going to go th through some of these uh, new features that the software uh, offers. So let's just kind of launch into that. First up, I want to talk about 3D vectors. And what do I mean by 3D vectors? Uh, many of you have probably made uh, 3D oblique scenes. You load some digital elevation model data. Here it is rendered in grayscale. doesn't really look too, like too much. Then you might go ahead and uh, drape some imagery on top of it. In this case, I have some uh, ecosystem data that's highly generalized. It's, it's mostly driven by uh, elevation. Uh, you're looking at this and saying, OK, that looks kind of interesting. But you know, how many of you can you know, actually identify this place? Any hands? Okay, there's one in every crowd. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> it is the Sierras. It's uh, Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park. And it's really not until you add labels and, and vector lines that this thing you know, actually becomes something that we can identify as a map. And uh, you know, to get these, these vector lines onto a 3D scene has been very arduous in the past. Essentially what you would have to do is render the, the, the vector lines onto the, the raster surface then go into a program like Adobe Illustrator and retrace them. And you know, for a large map with lots of you know, drainages, roads, trails, park boundaries, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, that, that could actually take days and days of effort. So it's, it's something I, I, I hate. And uh, fortunately, I could uh, say that there's a solution to that. And I'm going to show you that right now. We'll go into uh, Natural uh, Scene Designer 7. Um, this is uh, Mount Rainier National Park. I have a shapefile loaded in. It's the park um, boundary. Uh, up in the upper left is the camera view. There's a nifty new uh, button that allows you to actually ray trace the scene so you can see what it looks like more clearly. That's, uh, that's pretty handy. And what you see is that shapefile. It's a black line. It's a boundary. It's, it's rendered into scene. It's, it's being baked into it right now. So if I was to render this thing out right now, that black line would be actually on the surface of the terrain which is not really that good. You know, you know, even from the distance that you're viewing it from, you can see that the, the black line is stretching when it traverses hillsides. There's occlusions you know, when it goes behind hills. It's, it's not the best situation. So what you can do in Natural Scene Designer now is in the uh, overlays uh, palette, you can select the, uh, the uh, boundary area. I'm going to make it uh, disappear. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and render the scene without the, uh, the shape file on it, OK? Now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, we'll just call it by the National Park Service Alpha Code, Mora for Mount Rainier. And there's a little box down here, Save F SVG uh, for Shapes. And this is really where the magic happens. So I'll save this to my uh, desktop. And let me get out of Natural Scene Designer. What I've just saved is that Mount Rainier TIFF file, which is the rendered terrain, and also this SVG file. So I'm just going to double click on that and magically it opens up in Adobe Illustrator. Zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to do a select all in Illustrator. Notice that there's a bounding box around the, uh, the, uh, the park uh, boundary. What that bounding box represents is the shape of the, the rendered um, terrain, which is very, very handy. So let's go into the layers palette. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to put it on the bottom. And now I'm going to go ahead and place that uh, rendered terrain in there. Grab it by the corner, snap it at the fate place, more or less. This is trickier than you might think on a trackpad in front of a couple hundred people. Anyway, that's close <laughs> enough. I think you get the idea. We'll close this off. And now I'll do a select all, and you can see the, uh, the shape file is on there. I'm going to delete that guy right there. OK, good. Uh, 
So now we have an editable line around it. I'll, I'll do a select all. You can see Natural Scene Designer does a pretty good job of retaining all the data points. Where you have straight lines, it, it interpolates where the lines go over, over the, uh, the hillsides. One thing you probably notice is that there's a lot of occlusions in the, uh, in the boundary, where the boundary actually kind of nips behind uh, ridges and, and high points. In this case, what I, I typically do is just go into the object menu, down to path, and then join and that joins most of them. I'll do it again with a keyboard command and that closes that last one in the back. Now, whether you want to close that off or not is a, is, is a question for you to, to decide. When it tends to be a minor occlusion, I, I usually close them off, sometimes smooth them out a little bit. But now we have an editable uh, shape file ac actually overlaid onto the terrain. This probably just saved me you know, several hours of work you know, just by exporting that SVG. Now, uh, Natural Scene Designer will export all the shape files that you have loaded, and you know, what you'll have to do first is in a GIS is you know, export the shape files that you want to drape on top of your terrain, and then render them out one by one and just copy and paste them on your terrain. So it goes really, really quickly. Right. Let's uh, get out of um, Adobe Illustrator and back into the safety of uh, Natural Scene Designer. I'm going to show you an, another um, cool new feature, and this is, uh, this is uh, for sh doing um, shaded relief. Uh, the sample terrain that you see up right now is uh, an area of uh, Colorado. This is near Vail. The, the Gore Range is in the upper left of the scene. I'm going to render a shaded relief by going to the sh render menu, render shaded relief. Here's our uh, uh, preview dialog. And what you'll notice is this, this problem where you have a northwest trending ridge going right into the northwest light source, and that ridge is uh, disappearing. Uh, there's a really nifty solution to that now. Uh, if you hit the light button, you get into the uh, multiple light settings uh, palette. This is all new. And what you could do is add a bunch of light sources to this shade relief, and I'm going to put a whole bunch of them in here. These are all from the, uh, the default direction northwest and I'm putting them all around that northwest trending uh, ridge. And now I'm going to put a couple light sources right on top of it. Next, I'll hit the adjust button. And I'm going to grab the arrow tip and bring the light slightly to the northwest to better illuminate that ridge. Hit the uh, preview button, and let's see what happens. Ooh, isn't that nice? Uh, if you don't like it, you have alternatives. You could grab the arrow tip again, bring the light maybe a little bit to the, the west, and give that a try and see what it looks like. And I actually, I think I liked it more from the, uh, the north, northwest compared to the, uh, the west. Now, I know what all of you were thinking. Can you really mess around with this and do interesting things? And the answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to grab this arrow tip here, point it toward that uh, cluster of mountains. I'm going to grab this arrow tip here, point it in there, and bring that in there, and let's see what we can create. Oh. This, this seems like a shade of relief that Escher would have created. Now, um, the interpolation is very interesting here. If you click the uh, Show Directions button, you could uh, move this uh, little arrow around, and it shows you what happens. And there's some really weird stuff happening here. <laughs> so um, so it, it works very nicely. You could use multiple light sources for doing shader relief, plant oblique relief, and also 3D uh, oblique view. So it's, they're all sort of uh, handled uh, separately. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, you could also adjust the elevation of the light, uh, bring the, uh, the arrow tip in. It brings the light source higher, bring it out and it brings it lower. I'll hit preview and it looks like a mess. I don't recommend using that, but it's there if you want to do it. Okay. You're forewarned. Let's uh, cancel that out. And the last uh, live demo I'm going to do is with the uh, terrain editing tools. They're vastly improved and uh, now you can actually paint on a terrain. Here's the, uh, the raise the terrain tool. Get that selected. And with this, uh, with this tool, you can uh, paint on the terrain by a specified amount. I'm raising the terrain by a height of uh, 200 uh, meters. 
You could carve your initials into a frame. Um, I used to carve my initials into trees when I was a kid. Now I do it on landscapes. Um, okay. But there's actually practical applications to this. I'll make the size of the area that I'm dealing with a little bit um, larger. You see the, uh, the camera view in the upper left? That's this area right here. Pretend you, your client is a ski area uh, and they want to show their mountain really, really high because that's what ski areas like to do. You could actually paint on the terrain and raise this ski area mountain up. Pretty cool, isn't it? It's cartographically illegal, but you know, <laughs> We're among friends here, so we can do these sort of things and have fun. There's also a lower the terrain tool, and you see that ridge in the foreground? I'm just going to tamp that down a little bit. Oh, now that, that, now that mountain's really showing up well. OK, um, since I'm really getting carried away here, I want to show you something else. There's another tool. It's called the Edit the Terrain tool, and this just uh, paints a specified elevation onto the terrain. Right now, I have it set at 3,500 meters. And I'm going to bring the size down a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw a dam across this valley. Now, I'm with the National Park Service. We're not supposed to do these things. But you know, <laughs> this is all virtual, so let's, let's have fun. OK, I just put a dam that's 3,500 meters high in elevation. This is one high dam. I'm going to get the lake tool, and let's fill in that valley. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> render it out, and let's see what we have. I just created a ski and summer resort in Central <laughs> Colorado. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, there's, there's actual, actually some practical um, applications uh, to flooding things. We'll hide this, go back to good old PowerPoint. Whew, safe now, I'm in PowerPoint again. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's look at some other things we could do. And of course, PowerPoint is not advancing. There we go. Uh, this is uh, Lake Florissant, Colorado, uh, Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument, almost due west of here. Uh, there was a lake that existed there th uh, 32 million years ago. The park wanted me to create a map showing where the lake existed on the current park landscape. So what I did is I, I put a little virtual dam in the upper left where this valley kind of flowed out of the scene filled the lake up to a specified elevation, kept the water transparent. You can see the, the nape aerial photograph underneath it. I also put some background trees into the scene. A natural scene designer intelligently doesn't plant trees where there's water surfaces. So that's, you know, that's one practical um, application. You know, another thing that I like to do is uh, use the ocean plane. I, you know, I've been flooding things recently. And <laughs> this, we're, we're down in uh, Everglades National Park. Flamingo is the southernmost tip of mainland uh, United States. And it's a real low-lying um, country. Um, what would happen if we uh, had like 12 inches of sea level rise? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> Things start going underwater. I'm just raising the ocean plane right now. If sea level were to rise uh, 36 inches, this is what we'd end up with. Flamingo becomes uh, an archipelago. OK, enough of flooding things. Oh, by the way, that uh, Everglades thing you just saw, if anyone's uh, flying home through the Atlanta airport look and going through um, Terminal T, look for this on display in the uh, concourse T. So, so there. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, texture shading. Leland Brown uh, talked about this uh, several years ago. Really cool technique. And now it's a new rendering option in Natural Scene Designer. I like to use uh, texture shading for adding rock textures to uh, maps. Here we are at uh, Grand Canyon. I created a, a rock texture uh, shade. It really, it's ugly, doesn't it? But look what happens when you take that texture shade. Here's a plain Jane uh, shade relief of uh, Grand Canyon little texture shading added on top of it, all of a sudden you start seeing the rock layers and, and other uh, rock features there. And then you could colorize it, and it gets really, really bright. So texture shading is now an option in Natural Scene Designer. Uh, background trees is um, uh, improved. Uh, when you create uh, tree maps uh, that govern the distribution of trees, the map is now uh, transparent, so you can see shape files and imagery uh, beneath it. Here I'm uh, erasing trees from this, uh, this trail um, shape file. And when this thing is all rendered, you can see the mountain with that sort of uh, gash across the, uh, the, the foreground uh, surface where the trail is. It looks very naturalistic. 
Now, one thing I'd like to, to do with my 3D maps like this is to add a lot of background haze to it. It brings the foreground into focus and the background becomes, you know, well, diffuse. And Natural Scene Designer now has a very nice tool for adding background haze to a scene in Photoshop. What you could do is render a, uh, a distance mask. So uh, places that are uh, further away from the virtual camera in the background are lighter. The foreground is darker. Uh, Natural Scene Designer has been able to do distance masks for a, a version or two. Now what it does is it also incorporates background trees into the distance mask. So you can see the trees you know, uh, being calculated with this sort of fuzzy, hazy background. I would take this distance mask copy and paste it into a layer mask in Photoshop and add sort of fake haze to uh, a, a scene. This, uh, this happens to be Olympic National Park, uh, Washington State. Moving right along, Natural Scene Designer has uh, three uh, new map projections. And for obvious reasons, I really like these projections, especially <laughs> the one on the lower right. <laughs> kind of a... a and um, last, uh, last but not least, uh, there's going to be a, a, a new version, 7.01, that'll be coming out in, in the next few weeks. Uh, it'll have import capabilities for the new uh, Arctic DEM uh, data. This is a really cool project that's creating uh, two meter resolution data for all areas on Earth north of 60 degrees uh, latitude. Not everything's available yet. It's coming online uh, right now. And uh, to bring this in, Natural Scene Designers uh, supporting the polar stereographic uh, projection and also the big uh, uh, DEM, uh, TIFF DEM uh, format. So, you know, and that's all. Thank you very much. Those are really cool looking western mountain conifer forests, but uh, can natural scene designer do deciduous trees and forests that don't what, look what much like that? Deciduous? Yeah, uh, the, the, the tree species that natural scene designer offers are very limited. It offers a palm tree, an oak, supposedly a redwood, and a, uh, a sweet gum. Uh, I, I just you know use the sweet gum oak and, and redwood uh, they look okay from a distance. If you get up close to them, they don't look realistic at all. So it's best used at, uh, at from moderate distances. But yes, you can do deciduous trees that look pretty realistic. We had some questions back here. I saw somebody's hand. Somebody was back there. They're, they're being shy now. I had a question about the, uh, the planimetric oblique, and if you uh, loaded a shapefile and rendered the plan oblique, would it displace the vector shapefile to match the terrain of the plan oblique? The yes, displacement? It would. Oh, wow. So, wow. so now we finally can start using plan oblique relief with, without that extra penalty of doing a lot of tracing to get the lines into it. Yeah. All right, thanks, Tom. You're welcome.